You toured with Tina Turner. I did. And here's a confession. I love Tina Turner. And with all respect to my wife who knows as well, she was, <laughs> she was a fantasy date. Oh, right. <laughs> How could it be otherwise? Well, she'd have you for breakfast, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, I'd be vastly over contract. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was a great, great thing to have done. And in, back in 1984, I approached her and her management to do a song because they had asked me to write a song for her album. They were, they were doing an album called Private Dancer. And uh, I, I was in the middle of making my Reckless album, so I just couldn't imagine doing something else at the time. But suggested perhaps she'd, she'd like to come and sing um, on my album, and didn't hear back. But then I heard that she was coming to town, and I was in Vancouver, I was recording, and she was the opening act for Lionel Richie. And I thought, just going to give it one more shot here. And what so, do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. You already have a no. Go for the yes. So I sent, I sent uh, the tape down again. I said, you know, maybe we can meet up. And I got a response. She'd like to meet you. So I came, I remember going backstage. A lot of people around there. And I saw the hair coming down the hallway. She's going, where is he? <laughs> I'm right here. I'm going to list what it, I consider to be your top five songs. Go on then. <clears throat> uh, Summer of 69. Mm -hmm. Heaven. Uh, I do it for you, which is say everything I do, I do it for you. I'd be on your list. Yeah. Uh, have you ever really loved a woman? Okay. And straight from the heart. All right. That'd be my five. Left out anything? Uh, it's 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 um, subjective. So <laughs> if, if it doesn't make you happy, I'm all right with that too. Well, let's go down the list quickly and tell me how the song came to be, or tell me some anecdote about it. Summer of '69. Yeah, uh, that was written for Reckless. The original title of the song was Those Are the Best Days of My Life. But I've been goofing off with the idea of 69 and the sexual reference of it. And so I threw it in as an ad lib, and it, and it ended up being the name of the song. Sometimes it works out that way. Yeah. Although the song is deep and reminiscing, it's also reminiscing about love and, and sex. Love and sex. You finding know? out what love is, finding out what sex is. So you make a difference between them. Well, when you're, it, it's the idea of looking back on, into a summer when you were figuring it out. I don't know if you can differentiate, but um, maybe you can. Well, in my case, it was trying to figure it out. I never figured it out. Yeah, well, that's the whole thing. It's, it's about trying to figure it out. Heaven? Heaven was written for a film uh, in 1983. I was reluctant to write it for this film because it's such a stupid film. But my record company... Glad you don't feel strongly about it. <laughs> uh, it was just a turkey. And, but I, I, I got to, My record company was trying to get into film, the film business, and they wanted all their artists to write a song for the, for the film. So I said, yeah, OK, I'll do it. And the film was about a guy who was a male stripper and... Uh, can I just end it right there, okay? So it's like, <laughs> really? Um, so instead of thinking about the concept of the film, uh, I went back to Jim Valance, who was my songwriting partner, and said, let's just write a song. Let's just write a beautiful song. Let's not, let's not worry about the context of the film. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wrote Heaven, because the film was called A Night in Heaven. I mean, this is already too much publicity for this film, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I do it for you. Uh, again, another song written for a film. Um, I mentioned earlier that I had the, the, the good fortune to work with some great film composers. This was uh, a piece of music um, written by the late Michael Kamen. And I was sent a 45-minute cassette tape. You probably remember cassette tapes <laughs> um, of orchestration for the film. I listened to it, and I was, I was working with a producer called Mutt Lang at the time. and. Mutt and I were listening to it, and Mutt went, that, that's an interesting segment right there. I said, yeah, that's good. So we took that segment of, of the music, because you can't write a 45-minute pop song. They, only wanted, they wanted somebody to write a song for this film. Little did I know, they sent that same cassette tape out to, you know, 20 other people. <laughs> I had no idea. I thought I was being all excuse. But anyway, so I got this, I got this um, piece of music, and we sat down, and very quickly wrote song 
But in the meantime, we added our own music to it. And <clears throat> the call back was, no, we don't like, like it. We don't like, the, we don't like what you've done to it. We don't like the song title. Um, no. Goodbye. Goodbye. And I was like, wow. I thought it was a pretty good song. Um, but I guess what happened was they, they, nobody else came through. So then I got a call back saying, do you think you'd be interested in changing the song title? And I thought, okay, they do like the song. <clears throat> and I was like, no, I don't think so. They wanted a song. I think someone wanted to call the song, I'll Die For You. And I was like, no. Because I think the idea, I mean, it is a bit of a mouthful, everything I do, I do it for you. But it also says exactly what the song's about. And I, and I think that standing my ground was a good thing. However, it, it, it was interesting because I went to see the film. Because at this point, I hadn't seen the film. All I'd have done is spread the script. Yeah. I went to see the film, and the song didn't appear until the Dolby credit started coming up at the end. <laughs> and I thought, they really didn't like this song. <laughs> in the end, they really didn't like they it. They really didn't like it. They just wanted, they buried it so far back in the picture that they just, they, they, didn't, they, they knew that it was going to be some sort of promotional thing for them, but they didn't realize how big the song, nobody realized how big the song was going to be. I was going to say how wrong they were. Yeah. Straight from the Heart. Straight from, Heart. Straight from the Heart is one of the first songs I ever wrote in my basement. Just, I was actually learning how to play piano. I was about 17. I, just, I started accompanying myself and I wrote this song. I had, a, I had a friend who was a lawyer who sadly, he died of epilepsy. Um, he was a quirky guy, and he used to call me up with strange song titles. And he'd call me up one day and said, Straight from the Heart. I said, That's a nice one. And he had only the title, no music. Only, no no words. music, just, just, just the title. And I wrote the whole song and then called him. What do you think? He said, That's nice. That's very nice. Yeah. But the song sat around for a number of years. Um, it wasn't until It Cuts Like a Knife that I actually recorded it. The process of writing a song, what, do you have a certain time of day or? night or wee hours of the morning when you write? Well, I used to write songs by just jamming. We'd sit in the basement and we'd just jam over and over until we got something that sounded like a song. Uh, nowadays, I have to sort of allocate time where I know, you know, Thursday, Friday is going to be songwriting time. And usually we work from, you know, lunchtime to six o'clock and pretty intensely. And, and then that's, that's how it works. And then the rest of the time is just exchanging ideas via emails. You have ideas when you're on the road, maybe flying or driving somewhere, and you write, jot down a yeah. title or a Yeah, that's what happens. I, I, end up, I, I write notes to myself. I write love letters to myself. <laughs> Generally speaking, does the, does the tune, does the music come first, and then the lyrics, or the lyrics, and then the tune? There, there isn't a set formula. Um, you asked me about Straight From The Heart, you know, I, I think that if I hadn't had that title, I'm not sure I would have written the song, but that's just how it works. You know, just, you, you, something comes to you. And actually, I think that I'm a good mumbler. I don't know if you've noticed in this interview that I, I mumble quite well, but I, I think my, in my mumbles, I, um, uh, I, te I tend to sort of improvise, and sometimes in the mumbles, there's, there are key words, and those key words end up being song titles or, or, or things, signatures of what a song's gonna become. Yeah. It's like channeling or something, if you could imagine that. <laughs>